Hi, my name's Adam. I'm at Southern Cross Station in Melbourne and today I'm travelling on the Overland to Adelaide. That's 828 kilometres and it will take most of the day. So come along and find out what the experience is like. In this video, you'll get to see the food and drink included in premium class. We'll explore the train, learn a bit about the towns and landmarks along the way, and have a chat with the train manager. Today's journey will begin at Southern Cross Station in the heart of Melbourne, and take about 10 and a half hours to cover the distance to the capital of South Australia, Adelaide. Today's service departs from Platform 2. You can check in two bags of differing maximum weights depending on your class of travel. This is the overnight XBT arriving from Sydney. You need to check in for the Overland 30 minutes before departure. A staff member will greet you and give you a boarding card with your seat allocation. The Overland is Australia's oldest intercapital passenger train. Our motive power is this NR Class Loco, which needs a wash. This is the same class of Loco used to haul the GAN, the Indian Pacific, and the Great Southern. All trains operated by Journey Beyond, with the locos and drivers provided by Pacific National. Today's train comprises a combined power and luggage car, two red premium carriages, a cafe car, and two red standard cars. The history of the Overland dates back to 1887, when Melbourne and Adelaide were Australia's first two capital cities to be connected by train. Let's hop aboard. Initially known as the Intercolonial Express, it got its current name in the 1920s. Seating in red premium is in a two by one arrangement. There are 36 seats in each red premium carriage. Seats can be rotated to face the direction of travel. Here's my seat. Legroom is excellent. The staff will give you a menu and take your breakfast and drink order before departure. We depart on schedule. Tea and percolated coffee is available. However, the espresso machine in the cafe car isn't ready until 9am, so I went for an orange juice. There's no Wi-Fi or at-seat charging points, so I recommend bringing a power bank given the length of the trip. There is passenger stops along the way or to allow other trains to pass. Unless you're breaking your journey today, you will not be permitted to leave the train. Please take a moment to read the safety information chart posted on the wall near each exit so that you are aware of emergency procedures and the location of fire extinguishers. As the train is subject to sudden movements, please familiarise yourself with your environment and be aware of potential hazards like losing your balance and jamming your fingers in closing doors. Smoking is not permitted in any area of the train and this does include toilets and vestibule areas where smoke detectors have been fitted. The Overland is a licensed venue and bringing and consuming your own alcohol on board is not permitted. Today folks, the Overland will be travelling uh, through North Shore, followed by Ararat, Stall, Horsham, Dimboola, Nil, Border Town, Murray Bridge, and then Adelaide. Now this is a reserved seat service, so if you do see a vacant seat next to you or around you, please do not just move into it, there are more people joining us today. We navigate the rail yards and transport depots of Melbourne's western suburbs. It's great for train spotting. This area helps service the Port of Melbourne, Australia's busiest container port. Top 
Tottenham, we veer off the standard gauge line which continues to Sydney and cross the broad gauge suburban and regional rail lines. There's a velocity on the regional rail link. Breakfast is served. I chose the yogurt parfait with plum compote and granola. We parallel a grain train. The grain train is running on broad gauge, whereas our train is on standard gauge. There's berries inside my breakfast. It's delicious. But the far more popular breakfast choice is the spinach and feta omelette with baked beans and bacon. This footage is courtesy fellow Adelaide YouTuber Ryan Sofly. And now that we've left the rail yards behind, we can reach the top line speed of 115 kilometres per hour. This is the regional rail link that V-Line trains to Geelong and Warrnambool use. Here's a look at the route. There are overhead reading lights. The seats also recline. We're now coming into North Shore, a northern suburb of Geelong. After North Shore, the standard gauge line makes a sharp right-hand curve, so we're not able to reach Geelong's main railway station. Geelong is Victoria's second largest city and one of Australia's fastest growing cities. The platform here is quite short and was built in 1999 to allow the overland to stop here. I love when you get a glimpse of the engine on curves. for a wander. Let's check out the toilet. This is a large accessible toilet. The bathroom is basic but clean. I've heard of many names for a toilet but never a closet pot. Some people bring their luggage onto the train rather than checking it in. Let's take a look at the cafe, which is located between the red premium and red standard carriages. It's called Cafe 828, after the distance in kilometres the train travels. Cafe 828 is licensed and available to all passengers. There are some power points here if you need to recharge your device. There's a range of snacks available for purchase. Tea, coffee and soft drinks are complimentary for red premium passengers. Barista made coffee in hand, I'm going to head back to my seat. If you've ever driven between Adelaide and Melbourne, you probably know that going via Geelong is not the most direct route. The shortest route is via Ballarat. The line between Adelaide and Melbourne was originally broad gauge and took a more direct route via Ballarat. By the 1990s, it was the only interstate connection that was not standard gauge. When the line was converted to standard gauge in 1995, it was decided to use a route via Geelong. 
It's 54 kilometres longer, but relatively flat. Great for freight trains, particularly compared to the steep grades on the route via Ballarat. We reach top speed near Cressy. The morning mist lifts, and it turns out it's a lovely day. This is a dormant volcano. There are window blinds if you need them. For interesting information about the scenery you'll see on this route, I highly recommend checking out the Overland Train Guide on the Australian Rail Maps website. Now that it's mid-morning, Pies, pasties and sausage rolls are available in the cafe. Passengers travelling in Red Standard can order the same meals as in Red Premium. They just need to pay for them. Tray tables are located in the armrest. They can be a bit awkward to get out. They have half and full positions. Yes, that's coffee number two. Mount Langi Giran is also known as the Sleeping Princess. If you look closely, you'll be able to see her torso on the left and her head and flowing hair on the right. We get a glimpse of a former psychiatric hospital, Aradale, on the approach to Ararat. Ararat is a gold rush town. That's the broad gauge line from Melbourne via Ballarat. Ararat is served by V-Line Velocities, which travel via Ballarat. There's a Velocity that leaves Southern Cross 12 minutes before the overland, but reaches Ararat about an hour before our train because of the shorter broad gauge route. In its heyday, the overland was a seven night a week sleeper train. The overland used to be jointly operated by the South Australian and Victorian Railways, and later by the Commonwealth Rail Company, Australian National. In 1997, the Overland, along with the GAN and Indian Pacific, was sold to private operator, Great Southern Rail. Today, that company is called Journey Beyond. As you can see, the Overland is now a daylight service and operates twice a week in each direction. A few minutes later, we're rolling through vineyards, renowned as the Australian home of sparkling wine. If you travel on the Great Southern, you can go on a tour of the winery as one of the off-train excursions. The scenery becomes drier as we head towards the Grampians. We're now coming into Stahl, the closest large town to Grampians National Park. Stahl is home to Australia's most prestigious foot race, the Stahl Gift. It's held each Easter and has been run since 1878. This station dates from 1876 The Overland is the only passenger train that serves Stahl, as well as every station west of here.
The Overland relies heavily on government subsidies, and its future looked bleak in 2018 when the South Australian Liberal government announced it was cutting funding. But the Victorian government came to the rescue by covering the required subsidy. As part of this funding, 20 seats are set aside on each train for trips within Victoria on V-Line fares. For example, fares from Melbourne to Stall with Journey Beyond start at $75, but the same journey can be booked with V-Line for about half this price. we get a glimpse of the Grampians in the distance. This year, the newly elected South Australian Labor government came to the party with a four-year funding deal to keep the overland running. We're now in the grain-growing region called the Wimmera. The staff take drinks orders for lunch. Alcoholic drinks are not included in the fare. The mention of sparkling wine tempted me. This Chardonnay Pinot Noir sparkling is from the Barossa Valley. Lunch is served. I went for the focaccia and it's served with a small salad. The focaccia tastes really fresh, although I'd prefer it to be a bit hotter. Call me uncivilised, but I think the focaccia is going to be easier to eat with my hands than with the knife and fork. The most popular dish is the curry with jasmine rice. Again, this footage courtesy of Ryan Sofly whose channel you'll want to check out if you like journeys by plane or train. Ladies and gentlemen, our next stop for today is Horsham. Population is around 16,500 and it's known as the capital of the Wimmera region. Horsham once had connections to the sale of horses and the name Horsham is believed to be derived from Horse Ham, a settlement nearby where horses were kept. In 1880, horses were used to construct a water supply distribution channel, streaming from the Grampians to provide early settlers and farmers with water to fill their dams, grow crops and have drinking water. Due to harsh ongoing conditions over the decades, the reservoir water supply decreased dramatically. The Wimmera Mallee Pipeline, funded by the government, was completed in 2010 costing $688 million, which gave life to the farmers and the residents. Next stop, Horsham. Horsham is the largest town on our route between Geelong and Murray Bridge. As you heard, the train manager provides information about the towns the Overland serves. Horsham Station was upgraded in 2007. However, not all of the platform was resurfaced, meaning part of the platform is closed to passengers. Gentlemen, in uh, just over 10 minutes' time, we'll be at our next stop, which is Dimboola. Dimboola is a quiet, wheat built town situated on the stretch of the Wimmera River by the edge of the Little Desert National Park. The surrounding area is given over to the cultivation of wheat, oats, barley, and wool. The railway played a major part in the development of Dimboola. It is a major changeover point for the train crews and many people who maintain the railway lines. Dimboola is the smallest town that the Overland stops in. A key reason to stop here is that it's roughly halfway between Adelaide and Melbourne by rail, so is a crude changeover point. The drivers change, but the onboard staff stay with us for the whole journey. 
Many years ago, V-Line ran a regular passenger train between Melbourne and Dimbola, but this was cut in 1993. Dimbula Station opened in 1882. It is now home to a crew depot for Pacific National. Nil is halfway if you're travelling by road. This is the last stop before we cross the border into South Australia. The town's name is believed to come from an Aboriginal word relating to mist over water. During the 1990s, the BL class loco regularly hauled the overland. Coincidentally, this loco is named after Bob Hawke, whose birthplace we'll stop in later. Neil's station dates from 1887. Neil has an unusual claim to fame, being home to Australia's largest collection of playable pinball machines at the Australian Pinball Museum. Caniva is home to a private museum dedicated to preserving the history of the overland. If you've looked at a map of Australia, you might assume the border between South Australia, New South Wales and Victoria is a straight line. But look closer. Once you hit Victoria, it jumps 3.3 kilometres west. This is the result of a surveying error and led to a dispute that went all the way to the Privy Council in London in 1914. South Australia lost the case, hence why the border is further west than it should be. When the railway line was built linking Melbourne and Adelaide, a station was built in the disputed territory and paid for equally by both governments to provide a place for the exchange of locomotives and crews. And this is that station, Serviceton. The station was completed in 1889. Here's the road sign to announce we're entering South Australia, which means we need to put our clocks back 30 minutes. We're now on Australian Central Standard Time. appears to be some type of crop burning, but if you know, please let me know in the comments below. Our first stop in South Australia is Border Town which despite the town's name, is actually 18 kilometres west of the border. Border Town was the birthplace of Australian Prime Minister Bob Hawke.
This is a timber processing and intermodal freight terminal serving the southeast of South Australia. Which means that we do need to change our clocks, our timepieces, our sundials to go back by half an hour to come along with the Central Standard Time. Correct time on train now is 12, sorry, 13 minutes past two. That's the voice of the train manager, Charlie Nicholas, who I had a chat with. The best part about the job is travelling. Travelling and um, same trip, but you meet new people every trip. Every trip is different, it really is. So I've been doing this for a while now, but um, yeah, you can guarantee that it's not at all a boring job. So. Well, the Overland is 135 years old. I don't know whether everybody knows that. It's, um, it's a fantastic way to travel from um, Adelaide to Melbourne. You've got a lot of space. It's a comfortable journey. You get to see things along the way that you don't see when you are driving. And it is a very iconic train. There's a, a lot of feeling um, supporting the Overland. There are people, the small towns that we go through, there's lots of support for the Overland. And it's, yeah, it's much, a very much loved train. Here's a quick look at the seats in red standard class. Seating is in a two by two arrangement. There are 60 seats per carriage. Although the seats have a different upholstery and not quite as much legroom as red premium, I think they're the same design. We pass through lots of small towns in a region known as the Mallee. We're paralleling the Dukes Highway, which links Adelaide and Melbourne. These pipes carry water from the River Murray to the towns of the Mallee. These salt lakes feature in Journey Beyond's latest promotion for the Overland. It's time for afternoon tea. There's a choice between cheese and crackers or carrot cake. I don't really need it, but I find it hard to say no to carrot cake. It's served with tea or coffee. I went for tea. It certainly hit the spot. This solar farm has more than 390,000 solar panels. We're now in Talem Bend, named after a bend in the River Murray. This is the largest town on the route that we don't stop at. Talem Bend used to be a major rail junction. Locos are still kept here to assist heavy freight trains across the Adelaide Hills. The cockatoos are enjoying the grain around these silos. As we close in on the city of Murray Bridge, let's take a look at fares on the overland. Two doors that will be on the platform points will be carriage C and carriage B. One way fares in red premium are available from 220 Australian dollars. Red standard fares start at $115. I don't think that's unreasonable for an 828 km journey. You can also earn frequent flyer points. Occasionally you can find cheaper promotional fares. And there's the Murray, Australia's longest river, stretching 2,500 km from its origins in the Great Dividing Range. The rail bridge we're about to cross opened in 1925. All these years later, it remains an impressive piece of engineering.
This was once one of the largest and busiest ports in the Murray-Darling Basin, handling around 200 steamers and barges each year, with wool, grain and fruit from upriver unloaded and transferred by rail to Adelaide or Melbourne. However, river trade had mostly dried up by 1930. It's worth visiting this precinct if you're ever in the area. Murray Bridge Railway Station dates from 1886. Quite a few passengers alight or board here. In its heyday, the station had a refreshment room and trains would stop here for 15 minutes so passengers could buy food and drink. we get a few more glimpses of the Murray. There used to be expansive rail yards here. When Murray Bridge was a busy river port, up to 16 trains departed from here each day. From here, we begin an almost continuous climb for the next 65 kilometres into the Mount Lofty Ranges. Be sure to check out the Australian Rail Maps website for facts such as these about the route. The staff hand out feedback forms. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that of course was at Murray Bridge. Now just having a chat with the drivers, uh, we do have uh, an ETA of 6pm uh, into the Adelaide Parklands Terminal, but I think we might get there maybe a few minutes earlier. So um, if you do have any friends or family picking you up from the train station at Adelaide Parklands Terminal, now note that this is not the train station in the city, it's just five minutes out of the city. Um, let them know that the train will be there at the very latest at 6pm. If there's any changes along the way folks, I will let you know. Now also folks, the cafe car will be closing in the next 10 to 15 minutes. If you'd like any last minute drinks or refreshments, please come down and see the crew. Our speed gets as low as 40 km per hour as we navigate the curves and gradient. Our average speed for the total journey between Melbourne and Adelaide is about 80 km per hour. And this is the old broad gauge railway line to Victor Harbour, which was isolated when the line we're on was converted to standard gauge. The old Mount Barker Junction station is a sorry sight. The cool climate of the Adelaide Hills is ideal for making white wine. If you're ever in Adelaide, I recommend visiting some of the cellar doors up here. The colours are beautiful at this time of year. Another railway station that's seen better days. The station closed in 1964. We're still climbing towards Mount Lofty Station. This is the highest railway station between Adelaide and Melbourne although it closed in 1987 when suburban trains to Bridgewater were withdrawn. It's now downhill to Adelaide.
At Belair, we reach the start of the Adelaide Suburban Rail Network, which runs on broad gauge. If you do require a taxi, um, just so you know that we have phoned ahead. You can also yourself call for taxis and book them uh, personally, uh, but just letting you know that um, through past experience, they have taken a while to get to the terminal. So just letting you know. The challenge of getting taxis to the terminal at Keswick is a long-standing one. The station here dates from 1883. We're treated to a lovely sunset over the beachside suburb of Glenelg. Your checked in luggage will be placed directly onto the platform at the front of the train approximately 10 minutes after arrival. Please use the luggage check ticket you wish it with this morning. On behalf of Journey Beyond and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for travelling on board the Overland today with us and we look forward to seeing you another day. For those of you who are now home, welcome back. For those of you holiday, enjoy your stay. Adelaide Showground is the nearest station on the suburban network to Adelaide Parklands Terminal, but it's about an 800 metre walk. Adelaide Parklands Terminal, originally called Keswick Terminal, was developed by Australian National as a dedicated long-haul passenger station. It opened in 1984 and could accommodate both standard and broad gauge trains, unlike Adelaide Railway Station, which only has broad gauge tracks to serve suburban trains. This terminal serves transcontinental trains in both the north, south and east-west directions. The Indian Pacific from Sydney to Perth via Adelaide and the GAN from Adelaide to Darwin. So, what did I make of this journey? The Overland is a very enjoyable, laid-back way to travel between Melbourne and Adelaide. The service and food in Red Premium is very good. I really enjoyed the experience. That said, it would be great to see some investment in this train, including the provision of at-seat charging points, Wi-Fi and more modern tray tables. In an ideal world, the Overland would run more frequently, with increased line speeds, but this may be wishful thinking. We arrive about 10 minutes early. A final look at the seats in Red Premium. They do look a little dated, but they are comfortable. If you want a relaxing way to travel interstate, avoiding the hassle of air travel, and have the time, give the train a go. Checked luggage is available on the platform. Let's get a final look at our loco before it heads back to the depot. Taxis start to filter in, although many people get Ubers. I hope the Overland will be on the tracks for another 135 years. In my next video, I'm travelling from one side of the country to the other in a wide-body aircraft, an A330, in business class. 
be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. See you soon.